machine you're looking for, how much does it cost? Three million naira. How many would this machine produce? Twenty. You can see you're negatively skewed. I'm going to make you an offer. I'll also give you your first job. Yes. Are these the kinds of investors? <laughs> <laughs> All these yeah, uh, people speaking English. That job was seriously necessary. That shit was really hard. <laughs> Whenever you see these lions fighting like this, just know eh, that there's serious meat in the middle and everybody's trying to catch a flash of it. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, guys, welcome back. Um, this is the part two <laughs> of the episode nine review of The Lion's Den. Um, guys, uh, four entrepreneurs came into the den. We've talked about the two entrepreneurs in the first video. If you haven't seen that, you probably want to check um, that video out. Um, you could find it anywhere. <laughs> you could also find it in the description box as I have put the link there. Um, so if you have seen the part one, let's get into the conversation of the part two. Thank you so much for joining my space. My name is Julie Che. You guys know how I do it here. Subscribe, be a part of this conversation, turn on post notifications. Um, let's talk about what happened in the lion's den. Guys, um, um, so four entrepreneurs got in for the episode one we had um the hansel arts guy and then we had the tech guys who came all the way from abba um anyways the two last entrepreneurs were actually very interesting entrepreneurs every of the entrepreneurs who came in this season this particular episode were very like they really had big ideas and they had like businesses that looked like they were they, they had an opportunity to really scale fast and so the first person to come into the den is uh, this guy, um, this evergreen guy who had this beautiful green sustain sustainability um, kind of business. And he was asking for 20 million naira for a 20% equity share. His business was really fantastic because he the, his business was all about paper. And for, 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 for some reason, um, his business reminds me of paper mache, that arts thing we did in secondary school if you guys can remember where you sew kids um and with so many things and then it turns to art so it kind of reminds me of paper mache so this guy was um talking about how he was sustain um creating a sustainability plan um to avoid trees getting cut down so um they recycle used papers um soak them up and turn them to beautiful art so he had this very beautiful artistic um display of his work guys this episode had a lot of artists in it i will not even lie and so while he was uh, presenting it was it was just precise simple straight to the like no too much drama <laughs> anyway um so he was a peach and you know everybody looks looks like a big business and then the first person to hit on him was adenike you guys after peach question and answer <laughs> the real deal gets started so um mrs adenike asked um the question and was um Take us through the journey of the concept, the design, and the production. How does it go? And then he explained that they pick these papers up, soak them, um, mold them, and then design them. So, um, I mean, eco-friendly. Him talking about eco-friendly, my head, back of my mind, I was like, ah, where's Mr. Dan? <laughs> Where is Mr. Dan? Because I know he loves anything green. Once you put in the green factor, he is But like I said, this business was quite niche, and she said that... Um, you know, ask a simple question of how many have you made? How, how many have you sold? And um, I think how much did you make was the question. And then he said he had sold like five. And then they asked for the price for each and for the price for the one he had sold. He said he had sold like 25k and he had sold five. You know, I was thinking he would say 125 or he said 100k. I was like, okay, no problem. And then I know immediately he called that number. I, like, I'm sure the lions got uncomfortable because this guy had um, ended up, okay. Kiari, who you know will always ask the questions about the numbers, run us through your numbers, what how much have you made? You know, and then of course the question came, when did you start? He said it started, started two years back, 2019. And then and then the question was, how much have you made? Um, he said he had made about 100 k And then yeah, I was like, how did you evaluate your company? From 100 k that you have made in two years, you're evaluating your company at 100 million. Like, I don't know, but I think that we need to learn something from these lions. You need to understand something from watching these lions then that um, you just don't value your company because you have belief that your company will grow. You actually value your company based on what people can see, understand. Um, by numbers, the statistics of what your business is currently doing should be how your evaluation works. Like, I just think it's common sense. I just think even when we want to evaluate it to be high, 
um, we should be able to put some, certain things in place. We should already have a business plan of, okay, by the time I get this, this is how I'm going to make it happen. So basically, um, I actually felt very uncomfortable for the guy when they asked him that question and gave back that response, you know, and <laughs> even though he had very beautiful products, um, it really looked like something was not really looking nice. And then at the end of the day, um, questions came in, um, Dan came in and I think, the, the, so um, Kiai was like, how, when, how do you, how are you going to make, um, how are you going to make money from this thing? How are you going to meet target of 100 million? And he said that if you can produce 20,000 of the products, you know, yearly, uh, maybe 20,000 times 25, he's going to be able to make 100 million. Anyways, Mr. Dan, the enthusiast, the Green Factor International <laughs> Lion, came in and then the question was, um, how, ma how many of these can you, um, I think Mr. Dan asked, how much, how much money do you need? Um, I think the question that was asked was, how many can you produce? And then this guy said that he could produce, he said he was producing five or so at the moment. He, was, he said he was producing eight at the moment. Okay, Kiari now asked this very interesting question. Kiari asked this question that really made me laugh. And the question was, how many, how long does it take for you to produce um, this? And he said, three days. And I'm like, now, wow, you, your calculation has been wrong from the onset. You know, when they even asked him, um, how many can he produce? I mean, he was saying eight, ten. I was like, in a month? Like, it didn't really make sense to me because I was not even seeing his evaluation at all. Um, so Kiari, spot, Kiari spotted that. Um, Mr. Dan went ahead to ask, okay, this machine you want to buy, how much does it cost to help you with production? Because he said, um, you know, Kiari was like, so the, the whole money you're asking for, the 20 million you're asking for, um, it means you're using to start up the business. And he said, yes, that is capital intensive, that he needs money to start the business. And then Mr. Dan asked a very interesting question. And the question was, this machine that you're looking forward to buy, um, how much does it cost? He said, three million. And then the question was, how many, or how, like, what's your production? How is your production going to increase if you get this machine that you're asking for to create this beautiful um, product? And, <laughs> and I don't know, but he said 20, that he was going to be able to produce 20 in a month. In my head, I was like, 20 in a month, how does that relate? I mean, 20 in a month times 25. The business is still far away from 100 million. So it really didn't, I don't know, it didn't connect you to me. <laughs> I'm very sure some of most of the lines felt like that. Anyway, at the end of the day, that Dan had to just voice this as well. I need to play so that you guys understand what okay. I mean. You can see you're negatively skewed in the sense that the machinery you're thinking about cannot justify the volume you've talked about. So Dan wasn't wrong in saying that this guy was negatively skilled. As in, he didn't lie. He said the whole truth. And it was more like this guy was just estimating too futuristic. He had not put his work. He had not put his plan. He didn't draw a plan. He didn't understand. He just knew he ne He just felt he needed money to do his business. He had not put in the manpower his business needed. He had not really tested. So, like, literally, I mean, I disconnected from his business. Immediately he said that. Um, and then there was this complaint about the quality of his products that he needed to work on his finishing and all that. And of course, he was asked which of which was a star product. He said that the 25K product was a star product. And for me, I was feeling like if he had said the smaller ones were the star product, you know, product that maybe they can sell for like 5K and then he can, you know, when you say you can sell 10,000 in a month, it's believable. Um, I feel when he pitched that 25, I mean, I just feel the only thing that went wrong with this pitch was his inability to understand how to pitch very well to the lions guys i have a video on the questions to expect and what you need to do if you want to check that out check that video out so because i believe that business was like the most i i just love the creativity i love the green factor and it was really painful to see this guy leave the den without any 20 million without any negotiation just because he couldn't take his time to sit properly to understand the kind of questions how to respond back um to these questions because i'm very sure if he had pitched a lower product you know maybe like a 5k product or a 2k product and he had said that we'll be able to produce this thing like five thousand in a month maybe in a year we'll be able to produce hundred thousand and they're multiplying hundred thousand of that times 5k you know it's making a lot of sense um i just felt like he came ill prepared um he had not done his calculations right he didn't understand Maybe he was just not a business person. <laughs> Maybe he was more into production. And so basically when Mr. Paul came in, Mr. Paul came in, you know, chipped on, guy, you're doing yourself a disservice. You just shot yourself in the leg. Um, like, Paul always loves to do this 
general overview, just complete breakdown of you need to do this right in your business. So Paul actually said that he, had, he didn't have um, a business plan. That One of the problems that he noticed that his, his business needs to encompass every, like he mustn't do everything. He probably could get somebody to help him manage, estimate, analyze, and help him understand what his business needs. So it was very glaring this guy didn't have a business plan. And of course, a lot of businesses <laughs> lack business plan. Um, at the end of the day, it was just painful to see this guy walk away without a dime. Without a dime. Guys, the last entrepreneur who came in was Alice. Hey, baby girl came in prepared. A, peek, a sneak peek into what um, the conversations that went on in Alice's Today, presentation. We recycle tires into tables, chandeliers, and wall decor. We also make smart tables that can charge your phone wirelessly. It has a universal charging dock. It has a Bluetooth and speaker. If, when fully charged, it can last up to 10 Hours. It's a battery it, inside. Yes. It also has Bluetooth and speaker. I can actually play music for recreational. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Queen B came ready. Like, I know I'm a winner. I mean, that was so epic. Babe came prepared. Talk about bold presentation, bold entrepreneur. I think I'll give it to Alice. Alice did the perfect job. She had the perfect product. She knew what the Lions wanted to hear. She gave them the numbers. She just impressed every single person. They were laughing. They were so excited about it. In fact, a subtle jab had to come because those other Lions did not want any interference in their pitch, um, in their offer to um, Alice. So Alice um, is actually also another very beautiful business, a recycling business, sustainability. In fact, all the sustainability people just came for this one episode. Um, so this, um, she does tires, she recycles tires, uses them to make beautiful furnitures, um, chandeliers, a lot of things. And then she has a smart table she pitched that was mind blowing. I mean, she did the demo. I mean, this is what most of these entrepreneurs miss out from the business, especially these tech guys. I don't know why most of the tech people are not coming with i mean okay i understand why it's quite expensive to build something but alice came in prepared you know they asked for a demonstration and you know well i was like if you can just give us this thing and it does what you say i'm in already like in my head i was like well is definitely going to say I'm, yes to this lady and you know eventually she played the smartphone she talked about the wifey she talked about the boiling water i was like no wow this, I mean, this babe really has a smart business, and I really wish she could just go and get a patent right on that. Um, maybe it's out there, but maybe let her just get a patent. You never know. Um, so that nobody copies her style. I mean, the business really made a lot of sense. So I didn't care. Was the first person that asked her a question. The question was, tell us about your childhood. Your your business sounds interesting. Everything looks interesting. And I mean, she had to tell tell the story that it wasn't really her childhood that she, there was nothing extraordinary about her childhood but that inspiration came through her divorce and so she, she shared the story of how she divorced um you know she's 28 so probably she divorced a lot younger and she said the depression of divorce everything probably made her feel very depressed and she needed to do something to make her feel like alive and she said she when she noticed that when she was designing these tires she was feeling elated she was feeling excited with herself and then she kept on doing so that was quite like the motivation behind it and guys having a perfect story is another thing to win these lions alice's story was so fantastic her product was so like i did not hear this is a niche business from anybody <laughs> because definitely would have heard it from one of the lions if um, it wasn't so like palatable which was a palatable deal um at the end of the day alice was asking for 12 million naira for 18 percent equity share in her business and you know after bolaji you know you know, you know bolaji had to just you know like bolaji was already feeling her so much i will not lie <laughs> Um, so Bolaji asked, um, after Adinike had asked, Bolaji asked the first question, before you did this, what did you do? Hmm. And Babe gave another spill. She was like, um, before I did this, I used to travel to my village to go and get palm oil, come to Ido Market and sell. See hustlers. When you see hustlers, you go, no, I swear down. When you see hustlers, you know. So when she shared that story, you know, Bolaji was already bought over. I knew that. And he was like, oh, this one is ready for business. And he, she understands business. So basically, um, Immediately that story was told. Kiara just made you first offer. I'll give you an offer. I'll give you, I'll make you an offer. I'll give you all the money you need, um, but for 33%. And I've just noticed that that is always Kiara's, you know, and I don't know, somehow when he said 33%, I was already thinking, ah, I'm sure, Balaji, <laughs> I'm Mr. Denike will jump in. I already knew it at the back of my head. 
And so um, he, she asked, he said he was going to give her all the money she wanted for a 33% stake. You know, after they had said, well, I just like, you beat me to it. Oh. But anyways, he was like, if Kiari would allow, that he would be willing to join Kiari. So Kiari was willing to allow Balaji to get in with him. Um, so he accepted him. And basically, Mr. Dan was the next person who chipped in. And then uh, Mr. Dan wanted to do more further analysis, you know, and a, a little constructive criticism on her product. And then he was talking about the kettle, that the kettle was going to be consuming more power, that she should think about re-innovating that part of the business. But me, I was like, I really didn't see much sense in what Mr. Dan said. Because me, I personally felt... Like, um, if somebody does not want to use the kettle, it's not by force now. You leave the kettle and use the power for something else. So I just feel like maybe for the sake of criticizing, that was why Mr. Paul, Mr. Dan had to say something. I'm, my honest opinion. Because me, I will tell you the way it is. I don't need to miss my words. That was just my thoughts. And basically, after that, Paul chipped in. I think the editors this time did us, did us like a little wrong. Because there was this question they were asking. And we didn't really get the question. Um, I had to listen, listen. I listened like five times. I still didn't get the question. I don't know if anybody got that question. Let me know in the comment section. So there was this question. Um, I, I'm just guessing. Maybe the question was, uh, do you want to focus on making chandeliers and solar? Or you want to focus on the tire? Because you know, um, da, um, da, um, Mr. Paul is always specific about specialty. Do this one and leave the others. Um, so I really didn't get that question. But then... Mr. Dan Chipty was like, this is a hypothetical question. We need you to. And then she was saying something about, we have over 200 million people. If 1% can buy my tires, I'm very sure that was what she wanted to say. And they were like, no, 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 answer the question. At the end of the day, you were speaking English. And Bolaji and Kiara was like, is, are these the kind of people that you want in your business? What, what are they saying, please? What are they saying? Like, seriously, what were they saying? <laughs> I don't know, but whenever you see these lions fighting like this, throwing shit, subtle shit at themselves, just know that one person does not want to let go. And it is Kiari and Bolaji. They can throw shit at Dan, eh? <laughs> I love the part of the show where there's some kind of humor. You know, it just makes it all interesting and more human. Um, but guys, away from this, um, so it was a big win for Alice and also another big win for Hansel, um, the Hansel ad. So we had 12 million deal and we had an 18 million deal sealed. But seriously, guys, I feel Hansel's deal was way too much. I don't know. It's still my honest thoughts. I'm just thinking that if you are an entrepreneur who's going into the den, you really need to check these things out. You probably need to um, look out for... Um, experts in the field understand how these numbers are being calculated so that you don't end up signing a deal that you that would like make you feel like you're imprisoned i don't know sorry i'm using those words but these are my honest thoughts um so i i've been seeing mr paul as ah, this guy just wants he always loves to have a very high roi on his money any money invested anyway for somebody who's on the hospitality business and that their business i know he doesn't have bone in it it's just flesh um so those two people got um talk leaving those people who got deals now let's talk about those guys who didn't get the deal like looking at these tech guys i mean i feel like they did themselves a disservice they had every opportunity to get they were supposed to get that their 120 million if they had shown proof that this thing was valid and it was just not a wishy-washy marketing horse because we know deals have been signed that have amounted to at least a hundred million i mean look at the nine eight nine I mean, that lady had um, um, a co-working space and she got 100 million from the Lions, the two Lions, 50, 50 million. And that was a good business because she could really state what the money was meant for. They looked at her business like this business needs that kind of money because they have to rent spaces. They have to furnish, furnish um, these offices. It's, it's big investment, right? But for these guys who are coming in with the tech thing, you don't have a running app. There's no anything. There's no proof. You've not even put in anything tangible in your business. You've not even had turnover. You just sold 4 million turnover. Like, I mean, that's just receive sense. I don't know. But you're going to scare investors away if you're trying to look like you're just coming for their money. And one of the things I need people to understand is that this show is not a free show. That investors are coming into your business. It means you're going to work extra hard. Yes, they're going to give you the platform to grow. But at the end of the day, you're, there's no free money in the show. The money's going to be paid back. So yeah, as for 120 million, mm, and you know, get products. Ah, me, I'm like, <laughs> be very careful so you don't go and shoot yourself on the leg. <laughs> I just think, um, even looking at Alice, I think one of the reasons why she got the money she got was they looked at it 
this is like the breakdown. Tell us what the money is for. She did a very comprehensive breakdown. She said 2.5 million for the space. I'm going to employ people. I'm going to get more materials. I'm going to, like, it made sense. The 12 million, I think, yes, 12 million was what she was asking for. It didn't sound like too much money. I'm, I'm very sure if she probably had even asked for 15 million, she would have gotten because she had the valid product. She had made sales. There was like a correlation. But maybe if she had asked for something outrageous, I'm very, very sure. If they see that she does not need that money for that thing, they would not give her. I mean, imagine somebody coming to say, I'm going to use 20 million for marketing. Marketing, waiting. Waiting the market, 20 million. Take it easy. <laughs> I don't know, but I think entrepreneurs need to receive sense. I beg. Because the reason why we're watching this show is not just to watch it and get entertained, but to learn, to understand that these things, this is a narrative that will work. This is a narrative that will not work. Um, guys, I don't know if I'm doing well with these reviews. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, on the lion's den you've been seeing so far. This is my honest opinion. Um, I just think we should be smart and understand that this thing is serious and um, this deal should be looked at thoroughly. If you don't have an expert in your business, hire one, get a business plan. Like, I know if you have these things in your business, this lions will say yes to you. Like, they will rush you like, Kyotakara. Guys, it's been all um, for episode nine. I'm still thinking on how to make this more um, interesting. I, I'm, I don't know if I should do every entrepreneur per video or i should do one in like talk about the four entrepreneurs in one video or do it separate or just stick with my part one and part two guys i would really appreciate your feedback because this will help me understand um, how to make better content um hopefully i will see you guys in another video for now thank you so much for your watch time don't forget to check my other videos subscribe to the channel and be a part of the conversation um for now make good decisions make smart decisions and of course take care bye bye